hell up. <laughs> So I'm currently in Buddha, uh, which is just outside of Kathmandu. And this is a Buddhist stupa. You can see prayer flags, and every time you see prayer flags here in Nepal, it means it's a Buddhist house or temple or stupa in this case. So what you see, which looks like a nose underneath the Buddha eyes, is actually a Nepali one which symbolizes enlightenment and unity. There is so much different symbolism in the architecture of the stupa. There's five different Buddhas, which represent the five elements. And the numbers 9 and 13, which are holy numbers, are all over the architecture as well. There's many legends about how this place was first formed. But apparently it was first built in the 14th century and now it's one of the biggest stupa, uh, if not the biggest in Nepal and outside of Tibet. So this is a site of pilgrimage for many Tibetan, Tibetan monks. This stupa was actually heavily damaged by the earthquake in 2015 and was then rebuilt and it actually took 230 million rupees um, I will insert here how many pounds that is It's tradition to touch the bells alongside the walls of the stupa as well The Sanskrit mantra Om Mani Padme Hum is carved onto the prayer wheels and people turn them while walking around clockwise around the stupa which is called Kora. You can tell this place means a lot to a lot of people. There's a lot of people praying here, prostrating here, which means doing yoga, I guess, part of yoga here. And like a lot of people are very happy and lucky to be here, which makes me feel very happy and lucky to be here. To walk around and explore many other monasteries as well, which are just around the stupa. They say that you should make a wish the first time you see the stupa and it will come true. Obviously I made a wish but I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> 